Hi there, how are you? I hope you are doing well. Today we have this beautiful grinder to review, the Givi Grindmaster grinder. It has so many features, I will be diving into details of each one, but before doing that, I just wanted to quick note, this video is sponsored by the Givi team. Because it's sponsored by the Givi team, we were able to test this grinder within a very fast time, invest our resources, we went almost 10 kilograms of coffee, testing it under extreme circumstances. And last but not least, because it's sponsored, we were able to give away one grinder for one lucky winner. So stay tuned for the end of the video. Now to start with, I want to speak about the motor in the beginning. It has 400 watt motor, which is really strong and capable. Usually grinders that are small are around 100 watt. Grinders in the mid range are 150, 250 watt. There are some of them that are 300 watt. This one is 400 watt. Uh, because it is 400 watt and it has adjustable RPM, you can go at very low RPM, the lowest that it offers, which is 500 RPM, and use some burrs geometry that requires a lot of force, like SSP multipurpose burrs, which we have here right now, and go very fine, lowest RPM, no issues at all. Now for a reference how the grinder sounds without grinding coffee beans, I'm gonna turn it right now at the lowest RPM. It is relatively quiet at the lowest RPM. You can appreciate noise from the motor, but uh, it is really quiet. I'm gonna go high. Right now it's at the highest RPM. I wouldn't say it's a quiet grinder, but uh, it's reasonable. I don't mind it like... It's within the common sense noise, if that makes sense. To demonstrate how much this motor is capable, I'm gonna go at the lowest RPM. I've already have SSP multipurpose burrs, which usually require more force to grind with. And I'm gonna go really fine. Let you hear when the burrs are touching against each other. You can hear them chirping. Hear that? The burrs right now are touching. I'm gonna go slightly coarser around like Turkish coffee powder and I'm gonna bring very light coffee roasted beans they're really hard and dense coffee beans to grind and we have it right now at the lowest RPM remember that no issue at all pretty powder coffee you can just wipe it against your fingers it is Turkish coffee so it is safe to say whatever you are planning to grind with, whatever the roast, whatever the RPM, you'll have zero issues. As you are able to see, I went to the point that birds were touching. So this brings me to the grind adjustment mechanism. In an earlier prototype model of the Givi Grind Master, they had the grind adjustment mechanism as clicked. With this upgrade, this is the latest version, they went with stepless design. Basically, you have endless options. You can go all the way to the birds are touching. You can set the grind adjustment anywhere you want. It is stable. It will stay there. And it will give you a difference in espresso extraction between one to three seconds. I would say you are able to get, which is perfect. Honestly, you cannot wish more than that. The dial is really enjoyable to move. It won't feel as entirely stepless. You do feel like there are some micro micro clicks in there it's like small bumps while rotating the grinding dial but uh, it is smooth fast like right now i'm one i went all the way to filter seven back to one back to seven so it's straightforward going between espresso turkish filter coffee moving on to the next point uh, there's something called plasma generator which is a funny name it has recently been implemented in many grinders and in this one it's almost perfect or probably perfect i had no issue with static electricity so when the ground coffee is passing through the grinding shout there will be some electrical current it will prevent the static electricity inside the coffee particles which usually let the coffee stuck everywhere and you have to splash some water in this case you never need to splash water on the beans i even tried washed ethiopian coffee beans washed Colombian coffee beans, which is usually produce a lot of static electricity. Filter grind setting, no issue at all. So I'm pretty confident in saying by far this is the best plasma generator I've tried in any grinder. That's a huge plus. Going down from the grinding shout and the plasma generator right to the dozing cup. The Givi Grind Master offers you two options. Either you go with this dozing cup that has a built-in scale or a normal dozing cup fully aluminum dosing cup. Personally, I would have went with a normal dosing cup, 
because I was really skeptical about the idea of having scale implemented in a dosing cup. The, the idea is that I'm already weighing my coffee beans. This is single dose coffee grinder. I'm putting my beans. Why would I have to measure the output? But after getting it, I truly and genuinely drastically changed my mind. Let me explain to you why. Generally speaking, most people have one coffee scales or two coffee scales. If you have two coffee scales, for easier and more practical scenario, you have one dedicated that is sitting on the espresso machine. The other will be in front of your coffee grinder. You have a dosing cup there. You measure your coffee beans, doze it, put it inside the grinder, tamp it, go to the espresso machine, pull your extraction. You have your scale there and it's ready. Now what I've noticed is that having two scales, it is enjoyable, practical, saves you the time of moving the scale from the espresso machine back to your grinder. But at the same time, it is taking space on the table. It's always there. It annoys me if I want to do some latte art, if I want to move my espresso cup. When I had the scale implemented inside the dosing cup, I just take out the dosing cup, turn it on, pour the coffee beans and right from the dosing cup, pour it inside the grinder. I uh, really enjoyed it. It is not super fast, but it is fast to the point that it is sufficient. Going back all the way to the top, to the hopper. I don't know if you've noticed, this grinder does not have a hopper lid, an additional advantage because you don't have to worry about opening the hopper lid pouring the bean, then closing it again. It's always open. This is kind of a funnel. It has a funnel shape that directs the bean inside. And this is the hopper from the top. It has an anti-popcorn cap. It's called like that. And I had zero issues of popcorning. Even if you remove the funnel from the top, which is by the way, they told me they upgraded recently also. It's right now more secure, it stays in place. If you remove it and you pour the coffee beans, zero popcorning issues. You have it ready. Just pour the coffee beans, no need to worry about lid or anything else. Additionally, there's that pre-breaker, which is the helical shape that you can see here. Basically, it pre-breaks the coffee beans and make them into smaller particles before grinding them. In general, it will help you eventually in achieving better consistency for that smooth espresso extraction. Coming back to the on-off switch and the RPM adjustment. I really like the fact that it's from the front, for instance, in other grinder like Time More, the ground adjustment was in the back and many times where I felt like there's some ground coffee still there, I wanted to ramp up the RPM to grind everything out or I wanted to change the RPM, I had to go all the way back to the grinder. Whereas this one, you just have it in the front, you access it, turn it on. Right now we turned it on, you change the grind setting, turn it off. It is more practical. Coming back to the birds and the way to access the birds for either cleaning or swapping them, changing to other birds. You don't need any tools. You can do everything by your hands and it's really practical and fast. You take this bronze cover from the front. You rotate this anti-clockwise, the front color. I would say maybe like two and a half rotations. It came up. That's it, you have access to the birds. So this is the front bird carrier. Let's take it out. That's it. Oops, large bar. Usually it's called ground pin. Now, as we have the burr carrier out, I wanted to speak about burrs compatibility. I have here all SSP burrs with me. This is the multi purpose, the brew version. This one I have here the high uniformity lab suite. And we've installed the multi purpose inside the grinder. And we have the original Orion burrs that comes with the Givy Grindmaster. I like this geometry. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's perfect. I definitely personally prefer SSP burrs over this. But uh, for stock burrs, the coating is really sharp. And I love the results. Generally speaking, in filter coffee and espresso, they were enjoyable, reasonable. Some of you might already know how to install burrs and check for alignment. Others might not. Uh, I will speak about this very fast, briefly, just to illustrate the practicality of it in our case. First of all, you need to take these three screws from the burr carrier. As there are ground coffee stuck uh, inside the gap in the screw, I usually use a needle just to take the ground coffee out from the screw. As we've moved the ground coffee from the gap, uh, you just get a normal screwdriver, hold the burr in your hand. You might wish to wear gloves. Burrs usually are sharp, but uh, it might be safer to wear gloves. In my case, I'm used to it. Just untighten the screws one by one. All of the three screws out, we lift the burr. And that's it, you have the burr out. By the way, SSP burrs, some of them right on the back, rotary or fixed. Basically fixed is the burr 
you put it inside the grinder, it's fixed, it does not move. The rotary, you put it on the, the bird carrier that is rotating from the front in our case. So in order to check the alignment of the birds, I'll try to make it simple. Imagine with me, those birds are straight. If they are coming near to each other, the more aligned they are, the more positive and consistent results you are getting out of your ground coffee particles. So they are really straight, that's what you are aiming for. Sometimes there might be some difference, I'm speaking like micron difference. It's thinner than human hair by 10 or 100 times maybe. And it will eventually affect your ground coffee particles. So they might not be straight, they might be slightly tilted. The trick, the simple trick is that we made a video about it in the past. I will leave a link for it for your reference you can check. You get a marker pen, which is easily wiped. You mark all the way along the cutting edge, the far cutting edge of the burr on both sides and you place them back inside the grinder. You turn on the grinder and you go really fine until you hear the birds are touching each other. After that, you take out the birds outside, check for the cutting surface. If it's evenly wiped, this means they are well aligned. If not, it means that some side is slightly higher than the other side. So if imagining with me right now, right now they are really vertical and straight. This side might be slightly tilted. It means here they are touching, but in this side they are not touching. So what you do, you take a small piece of aluminum foil and you place it on this side, the lower side, to lift it up, make it straight. Now, of course, it will not be that much tilted because already the burr carrier is well CNC machined, but those micron levels, they do affect the ground consistency. So this brings me to my next point, which is checking for burr alignment. It's time consuming, depending on how much easy is it to access the burrs to check for the marker test. I have here the aluminum foil with me. I've put it from this side of the burr carrier because I had the burr here and it showed me that and this side it was not wiped. We need to lift it. So I put small piece of aluminum foil to lift the burr slightly up and uh, we put the burr back in place. We put all the three screws, we insert it back in and we turn the grinder, we check for the alignment. We want to access back the burrs. Here where it comes, how difficult it is to access the burrs. So just to keep this in mind, in this grinder, as you saw, it's almost like 10 seconds to access the burrs. Checking for alignment when swapping the burrs, probably one of the easiest grinders out there. Now, don't get me wrong, the stock burrs that they come in the grinder, they are pretty well aligned. In my case, I checked for alignment and they were perfectly aligned. You don't need to align them or even worry about aligning them. You are welcome to give them a check if you want. And in the case, if you decide to implement different burrs like SSP burrs, it is advisable to check for alignment. But generally speaking, they are well aligned because the burr carrier, once again, it's a CNC machined and uh, it's pretty accurate. Another important point to mention is the grind adjustment when changing the burrs. For instance, with the stock burrs, if you go to zero or zero minus one, zero minus two, you'll hear the burrs starting to touch. If you uninstall, go ahead, change the burrs, install SSP burrs. But when you are point at two or one and a half, you'll hear burrs are touching. This is because there are few differences in the thickness of each burr. So what should be done? Basically, you put your new burrs, you put the grinder back in place until you start hearing burrs are touching. At this point, you'll figure out that your grinder, this is my zero point. For instance, it might be number five. So this should be your zero. You take out the grind adjustment. You have four screws right here. Take them all off. Pop off the grind adjustment dial. While it's off, go to zero reinsert it back in its place and this is basically your zero. You were able to recalibrate your grinder. So if you order the grinder as stock, it will come with the Orion burrs. If you order it with the SSP burrs, they will come pre-installed and pre-aligned to save you the trouble. And if you decide to get a new burr or an additional SSP burrs to put it in, it should not be an issue. The process is easy and you might not even have to align them. They might be aligned as is. Now moving to the points that I wish to see addressed in the future. First of all, I love this color scheme, the bronze, but it might not fit everyone's setup. I do wish to see full stealthy matte black version. That would be really interesting. For the dozing cup, it does not have magnet in the top to sit in place. And there's like small groove that's supposed to hold it in a place, but actually does not hold it that much. So I many times found myself keep trying to find the point where I can let it sit in the middle. If it was magnet, instantly it would go in place. I do wish to see 
a future model with a magnet. Also, the Grindmaster has a feature of auto shut off after five minutes. Basically, if you forget it on with the lowest RPM, because at that RPM, sometimes you might not hear it. If you leave it on for five minutes, it will automatically turn off. And you do need that feature. Almost any grinder should do that. Because if you keep it on and you leave the house, eventually the motor might get burned out. Nonetheless, I do wish if the auto off switch was after one minute or after the grinder says that it finished the grinding. It's also a good consideration. Size wise, some people might argue it's not small, as you can see. I think it's okay. It's acceptable. I don't mind it this size, especially the height. It's not very high. It's on the right side. But yeah, but some might think it's too big. I would say it's reasonable. Last but not least, uh, the color contrast on the RPM dial. So the color contrast, the brightness, LED brightness of the coffee scale is sufficient. In daylight, you can easily see it. However, on the body of the grinder where you can see the RPM, you have to focus for it and it's slightly weaker than the lead in the scale. But also, I would love to see stronger light of the RPM. So to wrap everything up, I would say the Grindmaster checks so many boxes. And I'm pleased that nowadays the competition is high and there are so many 64 millimeter burst grinders on the market. And because of that, when a new grinder is coming up, like the Gravy Grindmaster, they are competing with already a strong market. With this one, the Givy team really did a wonderful job. Plasma generator, it's wonderful. No lead, no popcorning, stepless grind adjustment really accurate the ease of accessing the burrs swapping the burrs adjustable rpm and the strong motor if you go low rpm you enjoy light roasted coffee beans no issue at all my very final verdict on the Givy grindmaster uh, in the end look you are the judge as always you saw all the advantages of the grinder all the boxes that it checks and the price right now it's available on their indiegogo campaign it's the best price you'll ever be able to get for this grinder. They also have an increased warranty for two years. That is wonderful. Only for Indiegogo campaign. It's really a catch. It checks so many boxes as I've demonstrated for you. And uh, as always, you are the judge. You have the features. You have the look of the grinder. For the price tag, it's a brilliant grinder. Please do not forget joining the giveaway. There's a link right now in the description below. All you have to do is just show the Givy team some love on Instagram, on their channels, and uh, that's it. One lucky winner, you get the chance to win this grinder, and uh, hope to see you very soon in the next video. Take care, bye.